Hey, it's Dr. William Curtis here again to talk to you about fatigue. This is part two. If you look back on the video library and the NRG Tribe YouTube uh, page, you will see a uh, first of a series on the topic of fatigue. On the first series, I went through bodily functions and bodily reasons that people can um, have extensive tiredness and fatigue. I also gave uh, very specific suggestions for people to um, the things they may want to consider and talk to their doctor about if they're suffering from ongoing fatigue. In this video, what I'd like to do is cover things that sort of are in our mind or things that involve our mind and how that can cause fatigue. Uh, I listed these in order and kind of, of what I think is most, uh, most prominent in the people I deal with, certainly my own personal life. And uh, the first one that popped into my head was work, work, work. Modern world is full of workaholics. I probably have been one of those at some point in my life, and I'm working really hard, no pun intended, uh, to reverse that to some extent. But what I'm getting at with this is that there's a very real tendency to uh, set up lifestyles around the idea of working constantly. Every waking moment we take, we work eight to five, then we take, um, we take work home, um, and it's a nonstop cycle. And worse, I, I've heard a study that uh, showed that Americans uh, only take half of their vacation time. So we're not even taking the time that's been allotted to us by employers to, to get some downtime. But working all the time is actually uh, hurts your work um, efficiency. It actually uh, hurts creativity. And it is important that we have periods of rest. Uh, just like if you were a, in the gym, most of our fitness uh, Fitness folks know that if you don't take some downtime and some rest, you can't get really good gains by just lifting weights day after day after day. You do have to cycle that and periodize that. The second one that I thought was very uh, affects the brain and, and certainly manifests as fatigue is lack of sleep. Probably for the same reason as number one, work, work, work. Um, sleep is a real problem for many folks, A, because um, we just don't allot enough time for that. Um, and secondly, um, because of uh, various habits and stuff of which I'm gonna cover in a little bit. But if you're not getting seven or eight hours of sleep at a minimum, um, it is very possible that could be why you develop fatigue. It may be why you're feeling foggy mentally. It may feel why your concentration is low. It may also be why uh, you just feel like you have no get up and go, or maybe low sex drive or low energy, these types of things. So keep in mind, sleep's terribly important. If you think sleep could be affecting you, you might try to push for an eight to nine hour sleep window. And if you feel better after that, you feel more energetic the following day or so, that's a good sign that sleep is your culprit. Number three on this list, I listed as distractions. So we got work, 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 we got lack of sleep, and we got distractions. I call distractions uh, mostly surrounding media. So this might be watching you know, television, this might be um, material that you uh, download off the internet. It might be nonstop 24 hour CNN or Fox News, constantly having some bombardment of a media message in your head. Social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of these things are constantly streaming information to us and constantly attracting our attention and that distraction that constant shifting of attention actually, it's, it's tiresome. It makes us tired and fatigued and it wears our brain out, transitioning from one widget of thought to another. So keep in mind that um, media is a very, very big component of why I think a lot of people miss sleep. Uh, and it's a, it's a very uh, strong form of distraction that I think affects a lot of people and uh, leads to fatigue especially if that has negative programming anything that's excessively negative if you're if you're watching negative movies negative documentaries negative social media face uh, facebook pages and and of course uh, news you're constantly having to recharge and come back from that negative energy that you're you're absorbing around you so i encourage you to avoid negative programming Number four would be inactivity, and that's just plain and simple. If you're not physically active, your brain's not going to work right. You're going to be fatigued. You're going to be tired. And I kind of that's an overlap with the physical because the mind is connected to the body. But I think physical inactivity is a big, a big one for a lot of folks when it comes to mental energy and how much fatigue they're experiencing. Oh, number five, I would say, would be 
chemicals and drugs. So caffeine, nicotine, stimulants, I'm talking about maybe even ADHD medications, antidepressants, antipsychotics, alcohol, um, and some blood pressure meds. These substances affect how the brain works. They alter our brain chemistry, sometimes for the positive, but sometimes for the negative, depending on dose and depending on the person. The point I'm making is if you have excessive amounts of, let's say, caffeine or nicotine, or you take stimulants to try to stay awake, or you're on antidepressants or been on them for very long periods of time, or you drink alcohol, these are all things that if you're experiencing fatigue, you have to consider, you have to put them on the list of things that could be causing fatigue. The last one I'm going to have on this list is what I, I'd like to lump in is boredom. I see a lot of folks, and I certainly I've been one at various points in my life, where just boredom, lack of, lack of zeal, lack of desire to do something exciting, um, or not taking the time to go do something exciting, leads to a general malaise, a general sense of just blah. A lot of men have this. I think it's, it's uh, and, and certainly women as well, but it's, it's one of these things that I think we're meant to be active creatures. And when we're not out doing things, sometimes challenging things, maybe even exciting things, you know, I don't know, indoor skydiving or outdoor skydiving or uh, out, you know, bicycling or motocrossing or, you know, racing cars or any of these types of things that seem kind of exciting or maybe a little dangerous. These are things that sort of give us a little spark to our day and to our life. And, and travel is one of those. I think travel is a nice, safe, doesn't have to be dangerous, but travel gives us novel experiences. And I think novel experiences kind of light us up a little bit They create excitement. And I think that's one way to uh, combat mental fatigue. So a couple things I'm going to tell you about with this. Um, let's talk about a few things you can do to combat the common mental reasons for fatigue. First one would be um, plan downtime. I've written about this before on the NRG Tribe. If you go to NRG Tribe and search under purposeful rest, um, you'll see a topic that I've covered this topic in detail in a, in a blog format. Um, the idea being um, you should plan downtime you should have time off every week routinely where you have nothing you have to do and you get to do what you want. Second thing would be media fasting. I've written also on the energy tribe about this. Go there, check under uh, NRG tribe, media fasting. You'll see the topics. And I think I did a small video on that as well. But the idea is turn off the media for a while. Just take a break. You don't have to be a hermit and never look at the social media or anything like that. But make sure that what you do is you turn it off for periods of time so you can see how you feel, see how that's affecting you mentally. I'd also consider some kind of physical activity, aerobic activity, four to five days a week, 30 to 45 minutes per session. This will spark uh, overall health and it will also improve blood flow and improve cognition. Obviously, I, I talked about uh, limiting caffeine, um, sugar, stimulants, antidepressants, uh, um, in alcohol. These are things that you, you've really got to, some of those you've got to talk with your doctor about, but the reality is if you're, uh, you know, drinking large amounts of caffeine to try to stay awake, at some point you're going to have to try to start being away from that. And you'll actually notice you have less, in, you have more energy once you've been off of those. Um, so that's something you're just going to have to try and play with or uh, figure out the dose on that. Uh, number, let's see, number five, as far as like things you can do, would be do something challenging, learn, read something new, take up a new hobby, um, go do something you haven't done before, try to get out and be social. These are all things that tend to improve energy and create excitement in our lives and kind of fight that boredom that, that can, so often can uh, sort of just lay like a fog over our lives. And lastly, and it's going to seem like a last minute curveball on this one, but just hydration. There's been lots of um, examples in a research about how hydration affects the mind and the, the brain in particular, which can lead to um, fatigue. And I believe that hydration might be a underlying factor, especially for folks that drink a lot of caffeine or, or don't you know, tend to consume enough fluids during the day. That can be a considerable cause of fatigue. Um, and if you're going to do that, you might sprinkle maybe uh, in an 8 ounce, 12 ounce glass of water. You might go ahead and sprinkle just a pinch of sea salt in that and squeeze a little lemon juice. That's a nice little cocktail that tends to rehydrate and replace electrolytes. 
So I hope that's been helpful. Kind of hit you with a lot of material there. Lots of um, reasons, mental reasons people can have fatigue. And then I went through a few solutions of which I've talked about quite a few of these on the NRG tribe. And you can certainly, certainly cycle back and kind of research some of those topics that I discussed. As always, I hope that these messages and these videos have been helpful for you. I know that what I tend to select as far as content tends to be things that I commonly see with patients. I think it's really important to share this type of message because so many people have the same thing. So I'll appreciate if you give me a little feedback, uh, let me know if this content is uh, where it's landing for you. Uh, also, if you could share this, uh, both the, the page and uh, these videos with anybody you think it might be helpful for, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate that. One of my sort of missions as a, as a doctor is to share a helpful message with as many people as I possibly can. And social media is a great way to do that and share ideas and help each other grow and improve. So again, thanks for your time and I look forward to the next video. Take care.